Good morning, it's January 23rd, and today's devotion, uh, still based on the book of Jonah, uh, the first three verses of Jonah chapter 4. But Jonah was greatly displeased and became angry. He prayed to the Lord, O Lord, is this not what I said when I was still at home? That is why I was so quick to flee to Tarshish. I knew that you are a gracious and compassionate God, slow to anger and abounding in love, a God who relents from sending calamity. Now, O Lord, take away my life, for it is better for me to die than to live. And the title for today's devotion is, No One is Entitled. Grace is free for all. What in the world is Jonah's problem. He has just preached the most effective sermon that I can think of in all of in all of Scripture, probably more than Peter and Pentecost or Paul on Mars Hill or Jesus himself on the on the Sermon of the Mount. He has caused a, a major city, the most major city of, of that era, of that time period and, and that geography to repent. He hadn't even gone through the town or the city one day, and it was a three-day journey. And already they're in sackcloths and ashes, and they're repenting, and they're fasting, and they're wanting, they're, 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 they're giving offerings to the one true God. And, you know, almost just like those sailors on the boat who came to faith in God and, and, and made promises, here again, Jonah was effective. God used him effectively to cause people's hearts to turn back to God. And here he is saying that he's so angry that he would rather die than know that the Ninevites experience God's grace. He even describes God with perfect language, that you are a gracious and a compassionate God, that you're slow to anger and abounding in love. He even experienced that love and that grace and that compassion when a big fish swallowed him up and he was rescued from the sea rather than dying in it. It's crazy, isn't it? It's just absolutely crazy, Jonah's response. Unless somehow there's always this danger for those of us who know God that we end up thinking that we're entitled. Which then means other people are not entitled. We build up some type of scenario that I deserve it, but they don't. And in effect, we just destroy grace completely because there is no grace in that kind of entitlement. What do we do about that? We Christians look out at a world and out at a society that sometimes looks like looks like it's going to hell in a handbasket. We wonder what in the world is going on. And it is so easy for us to pull out the fingers and start to accuse and start to judge and start to condemn. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't speak truth. I'm not saying that we shouldn't be proclaimers of the truth. But the last I checked, every time God has opened his mouth, love is behind the truth he speaks. We have to have softened hearts. We have to remember that once we were the Ninevites, we have to remember that we are entitled to nothing but have received everything from God in his grace. And that we are the conduit of God's grace. And we should expect that God would continue to redeem the lost and bring them to him because that's the whole purpose of the church's existence to save one more to save one more so i pray that we have softened hearts i pray that we realize that grace is for all and that you and i are to be proclaimers and sharers of that love as we live in our daily lives i encourage you to read the devotion attached i pray that this devotion is a blessing to you have a firmly rooted day